When was the last time you felt calm? I would say two years ago. Okay. Two years ago, I was, was it? upstate. Upstate. Where yes. Upstate. I was in Lake Champlain, actually. Actually, it might have been a year and a half ago. Never heard of her. Lake Champlain. Never knew you went to Lake Champlain. Where was I? I went twice. That's that's on the way back. I got a ticket. So I was calm ever until since, that. And ever, ever since, since you've been on the run. <laughs> ever since on I've the been damn on the run, run. And I haven't been calm. Have you paid that ticket? For the podcast sake, yes, I have paid that ticket. But for the government's sake, sake TBDMD. When this episode comes out, the ticket will be paid. I love that. That's a really good challenge really you set for yourself. Imagine, like, what if the cops came right this instant and arrested both of us dressed like this? I think it would make a lot of sense for us to have, like, our mug shots in this. For them to be filming us, there would be camera crews. We would say, can we do it for content? I'm gonna have a heart attack. I'm gonna have a heart attack dressed as dressed as the fucking snow miser. That's it, because that was a lot of caffeine all at once. Joe, that was the whole like Nothing else. Sixty milligrams. Nothing of else caffeine. in my stomach but that. Nothing else. Not even a sip of water. You're gonna pass the hell if away. I pass out dressed like this. What are I we gonna need do? Need you to one put underwear on me. Okay. Number one. And then I have to wipe your face down, right? You want then that at least remove the prosthetic nose. Okay. Okay. And then I need you to get onto my internet. Okay. Clear my search history. Yes. Open up my phone. You know my password. Get yes. into my, my hidden folder. Delete wipe it. it all out. Okay. Except if you see something that you like, feel free post it. Post it. Post it for That's you. That's in memoriam. Okay, cool. So you Joe always wanted you guys to see his dick. Okay. You're Merry right. Christmas. You're right. I'd put it on yours and good children. And I probably yeah, would, would I would, you would do a collaborative I would post. For, with mine as well. Yes. <laughs> that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. great. So that's handled. So how are worry. you doing? I'm doing, listen, the morning was a crazy morning. It was a fun morning, but now I'm happy to be sitting down in this chair. It feels like home. Full costume. What costume? This I would is how s- I see you. This is how I see you on a daily basis in my head. You see me as the heat miser? I do. You have your little ears on? Oh, look at those things. Those, those little freaky like, things. Those little things. They're going to blend in. They do blend in, but I think that his ears also kind of blend. I think we should start. At the beginning, two nights ago when you were spray painting that shirt. It's, you know what? Joe's costume, it looks amazing. But he was able to just. <gasps> My whole stomach is out and you weren't going to say anything? I couldn't see over your knee. My whole stomach is out and you weren't going to say anything. <laughs> I couldn't see. I your knee was going to look crazy. Your knee is crossed. Some people want stomach, Joe. Continue. I was going to do arts and crafts because the costume wouldn't come in time. So I, I also feel felt... like you were like challenging yourself. Like you were kind of like, I'm going to do this because I was like, you know what? I'm, I am a designer. Yeah. I'm a designer. It's Project Runway. It was. Best way to do this party. I'm just shocked. And you need ventilation in this room. A window must be open because the fumes are bad. Just don't come in bed, please. I can't just be exposed 24 seven. I just cannot be exposed. But what's going on? Because you wanted to glitter that collar. You would have thought. And so you waited until you waited until it was on the shirt to start spraying the glitter on it. Well, because it was already glued. How's my hair look right now? It felt like it felt like Project Runway. It felt like RuPaul's Drag Race. It felt like any design challenge. Why does it look like this? What do you mean? Like there is like stain, stain, stain. Yeah, there's stain. There's like a glue all over the shirt. There's gonna be glue inside the shirt. Yeah, there's stains. So I got the shirt, I got the felt, and then I got this red glitter. Cause I said, you know what? I'm gonna spray the glitter all over this damn shirt. I am spraying the glitter in my room, windows closed. I hear, I just start smelling fumes. <laughs> From my room. And I'm saying, shit, shit, I have nothing underneath the shirt. There's nothing to protect my floor from anything. But the craziest thing to me, and as you can see in this footage, is what was most bizarre is you chose to spray the glitter on top of the shirt. Like, you cut out that gorgeous little red trim. Also, the collar in general is interesting to me. It's fiery, wouldn't you say? And then you glued it to the shirt and you started spraying directly onto it. Had you sprayed the glitter onto the red trim and then glued it to the shirt, it would have such a clean and sleek appearance. It's just like that didn't 
it, that didn't you. hit me. I feel like fire flames like aren't always straight edged, and I think for me, uh, this is an original. What if you like? Uh, I feel like I'm on drag race. Well, you're going home first episode. And that was, I, during this time, watching you struggle like this, it really did put into perspective that not everyone has that kind of, like, thought process. No. You can just fold this up a few times and then cut it once. Andrew, you cut? Like this? Try it out and see what happens. Do you know what? It could have just been an orange shirt. And I said to myself, I wanted to do arts and crafts because I wanted to make it seem a little bit more legit. But you know, it's more about face. Well, the collar, I think that you almost did. Like, I think you did a the good job. The collar is like I whatever. Think you did a good job for your genre of doing a good job. Thank you. I'm just going to let you do it. But what if I mess it up? It's okay. That is fully not the direction you just said you were going to cut it in. Going both directions. What? It's killing me because this is just not on camera. I'm just curious about what your plan is, what your plan of action is with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to put a few things down because I think I'm gonna take the entire shirt. Oh, I'll probably get a hanger of sorts. People go upstairs for this. And I'm gonna spray the entire shirt with this red glitter. I wanna be there for that. I think you should do that immediately. It looks really, like, it objectively looks really good. It's just this. That's what's, this is what's troubling me again. No, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. Are you loving our holiday decor? Yes. Let's see what looks in there. It's pitch black in here. <laughs> okay, you gotta show them the view though, because oh, yeah. the view is insane. Can you believe people pay? People pay for this view. Yeah, us. What are you saying? We live here. Oh. Oh, you know what? It can go on the floor. You know what? No, no, the floor has it's covered in tar. Why did you do that facing the wind? I can't imagine what I look like right now. Are there glitter all over me? It's like somehow not that bad. I cannot believe I used a whole <laughs> Now, <laughs> you I can't would, even express I would what that is. definitely buy another shirt. Wait, I thought you were going to say that, actually. You think so? I think my, my head, head hurts. I'm getting my head My head hurts so bad. And I think maybe I'm just destined to be America's Next Top Designer. I think that's what it is. And I'm destined to be America's Next Top Designer. Were you in art model. classes? I was in art classes. They recommended, recommended me for studio, studio art. art. In eighth you grade for studio art because you know what I I knew how to draw I I had some whimsy to me, but the execution you would always draw lacked. some freaky shit. There was a stamp to them. There was a trademark to of your kind of drawings. They were very like the nose flat, very flat looking characters. But I feel like they were very clean lines. Yes, it was very well executed. It was very very like. There was just a certain style. You were almost like post surrealism in your art. Thank you, you so know what much. I, mean? I know exactly what you mean. And especially if I was to be drawing a face, it would be a very thin face, a very interesting nose. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Almost I exactly. It, it's giving butternut squash. Yes. Someone called me when I was younger. My body butter, butternut squash. A good children. It's the holiday season. <laughs> <laughs> it is the holiday season. And we're going to say that for the next few episodes. But it's the holiday season. And what brings you more than more joy than Heat Miser and Snow Miser? I don't even know who these bitches are. Me either. When we when you just when you decided, when you said we're going to be Heat Miser and Snow Miser, I was like, who the fuck is Heat Miser? Who the hell is Snow Miser? And who was who? But you know they look like they like the, I know I the know the song. I know the images of these people, but I've never seen I've never I don't think I've ever seen a year without Santa Claus. And if I have, it was at it was at religious education. Yes. With Sister 
the ins. Yes. No doubt, that was the only chance. Like, I feel like those like old claymation like Christmas films were always just like so deep. creepy. They were so scary. And Rudolph is teetering that. R- Rudolph walks the line, but Rudolph himself is just so cute. Yes, but Rudolph did. I remember as a kid, Rudolph did freak well, me. Well, Rudolph out. was always like, "Oh no, 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 I can't walk, and I'm gay, and I'm, I, no one likes and me." You're in like, the town. who is voicing them? Like some nasally ass congested gay bitches. Well. It sounds like we're going to get a call in about <laughs> two weeks. Um, Wait, is, is Snow Miser Jack Frost? I think so. I think so. I'm Mr. I'm White in, Christmas. I'm not even kidding. When I look in the mirror, this you is see. what I see. <laughs> this is what I see. Every day. Every, Every single time day, you get ready to record the podcast. I can't escape it. I look at my nose and I go, all right, time to get out there. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to Good Children, the podcast where hosts Snow Miser and Heat Miser reflect on our 22 years of friendship. Growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s. And all of the nostalgia, trauma, and revelations about Mr. Santa Santa Claus Claus himself. I miss Nick. Where are you, Christmas? Where are you, Christmas? You miss Nick? I miss Nick. Because I feel like when I was growing up, me and Nick were so close. I literally, he was God. I mean, we talked about this last year. Yeah. But I believe that Santa Claus was a more important figure in my life than God, than yes. honestly both of my parents, than yep. any authority figure. Certainly more than George Bush. Oh, sir. Bring, I don't know why I even brought him up, but you know, those. Sir. I feel like George Bush was up <laughs> there. When you were five years old. He was like yeah. an important guy. He was he president was in the United States, but I was like, Santa Claus is a little bit bigger. Isn't that kind of crazy that when you are so young that like you're you like, see the president, you're like, oh my God, that's the president. That's the president. That's the president. Of the president of now United I'm like, States. who the fuck is the president? Joe like, Biden's what? still doing that shit. Did you see his cake? No. When it was on fire? Yes. Yeah. Because there was 81 candles. But did you see what he said about the Renaissance tour in Brittany? No, what did he, he say? He goes, he was pardoning the turkey, and he says, this is like old news, but he goes, um, he's so you. He's so, you're <laughs> yeah. very Joe Biden. Okay. He says, <laughs> um, <laughs> he's part, he's like, this was a harder, this is harder to get than uh, tickets to the Renaissance tour or Britney Spears' tour. I mean, she's right now, she's down in Brazil. She's at and she's in Rio right now oh. doing her shows. Get that old man out of the office. He thought that Taylor Swift was. And Britney you know, whatever Spears. gay intern wrote that for him was probably like going to choke him out in that yeah. moment. Being like, how do you get this shit wrong? Stop trying to stop trying to get Joe Biden to reference the Renaissance tour. No. He doesn't know what that is, and it's he okay. Doesn't, he doesn't know. Let him be the old ass man. Let him. Mitch McConnell, all he wants. You kind of right Am now I giving Mitch give McConnell or both, Joe Biden. You give Joe Biden right now, but yeah, Saint Nick, Nicholas, Santa Claus, whatever you want to call him, he has many names. Did you um? Did I ever have a, like a wet dream about Santa? Why would you fill in the blank of what I was about to say with? Did you ever have a wet dream about Santa? I Claus? just felt like that's the way that we were progressing in the episode so <laughs> far. Like I just felt like we were going from Joe B- Biden partying a turkey to Two. sexy Santa. Well, he is sexy. I mean, there are definitely variations of Santa that could be very, very sexy. I think the classic Santa. You think the classic like big belly, yeah, like absolutely velvet suit, yeah, daddy, yeah, daddy with a beard, yeah. Are you like looking for Santa Claus with a gray beard or a white beard? Or who the it... hell is gray beard Santa Claus? Oh, you haven't seen like Silver Fox Santa. What are you talking about? Oh, what are you talking about? I don't think that you. I think that you would like Silver Fox Santa. It gives more real. He gives more realistic. He has like less of a curly beard, more of like the straight beard, but with like it's gray. I don't fuck with that. I don't fuck with that. You want white Stick Santa to... beard? Well, <laughs> I was oh! say, don't push it. Don't push, Don't it. push it with white Santa. Santa beard. Beard. Make sure beard is at the end of that sentence. Of course. I want Santa to have a white beard. Okay. The ethnicity and race of Santa is completely doesn't up matter. to the interpreter's imagination. It doesn't matter. And either way, I believe he's hot. And I I would like to know, do you think that if we talk about the North Pole enough in this episode, we're going to get a DM saying, hey, next year, do you want to come to the North Pole? Do you think there's a North Pole Instagram account? I Joe, a hundred percent. Were you Santa tracking? Did you know how to do that? Of, I'm just sorry. I know how to do that, Joe. Of course I knew how to do that. Or 
or my family knew how to do that. And you were Googling and you were watching the Santa Trap. Of course. And you'd be like, oh my God. Oh my God, he's in Norway. He's in Norway. He's on the way, get to sleep. Why was he always like- in Norway. Always in Norway. He's always in Norway. I was like, how long does it take to get here from Norway? I feel like I just remember, and I've said this before, but I wanted to get that guy. I wanted to get that guy good. And that was my goal. You mean like trick him? I wanted to you trap him. You wanted to home alone him? I wanted to, tra- I wanted to trap and trick him. And treat Santa Claus. Because I, I wanted to meet that man. I'm scared about the if treat. I, <laughs> if I ran into Santa as a child, I would I would stow away in the sleigh. I would say, I'm going back to the North Pole. Of How course. could I not? Of course. It's really petrifying to look at your face. I think I could do, like, I think I could be a really good horror movie villain. Yeah. Because well, I'm not afraid to go there. I'm not afraid, to be, fr- I'm not afraid to be freaky. No. Well, I think that if anything is being shown throughout this podcast, is you're not afraid to be freaky. Yeah. That's body horror. Yeah. There have been multiple times where I've been like, whoa, we're freaky deaky. This is this one for sure. I'm like, we're actually crazy freaks on the internet that like, we don't need to be stopped. We are going to keep going. And I can only assume where it's going to go from here. Because once there's budget, we've had, once there's budget, once someone gives us one dollar to make this podcast, it will be something terrifying, scary every week. So back to Santa, back Claus. to Santa building, building toys. That was something I never. That was something I never really completely understood about Santa, and I think we talked about this last year, but um, I never really understood how that those elves were like in Hasbro's pocket, were like in Mattel's pocket, like. Because there was a lot of narratives. I think the Santa narrative needs to be updated. I think we yes. need to ad- adjust and adapt for the modern age what those elves are doing up there. Because what what was going – like, did they have tools? I'm assuming they well, yes. were good with a screwdriver. They yes. were good with but were they, a hammer. Did they have – like, were they pl- – casting plastic molds of barbie and building barbies or were they just they getting were. those from the were they were they outsourcing is santa a drop shipper do you are think, the elves drop shipping do you think he's like buying in bulk that's what i'm saying is it like Sheehan? it's Sheehan. it's like alibaba now that's a movie i would watch Sheehan. a she like what if the north pole has become like a Sheehan? and everything's like fast fashion yes. and fast like which which is basically would be at this point look at what the toys are for christmas wait joe that's actually a very very good movie you're this jolly jovial santa who's like let the elves do whatever they want they're like they're working overtime they're to the hell i come in just like this and i say i'm actually the north pole inspector and it's every 100 years i just check in just see whatever see what the workplace is doing you know like make sure the quality control is good i walk in and i say you're going to prison no, I almost think that you're not checking every 100 years. I think that this is the first time you're ever checking, but it's a new mandate because it's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Has it, though? When did Santa When did Santa start his job? I think that if he's a saint, St. Nicholas, he's been around for thousands and thousands of years. But has he, though? But has he? Because isn't, didn't Coca-Cola invent Santa Claus? You're kidding me. At least, like the mo- the modern image of what we believe Santa to be at this point. What in the nine in the nineties in the maybe the nineteen nineties eighteen hundreds? I don't know. I thought this is why we need to start turning this podcast into a history. Podcast. We have to at least. I think at least we should meet twenty minutes earlier every time do and do the research. Do Google two things. I think if we Google two things, how long has Santa been around? So Santa started getting associated with Christmas in like the late 1700s. And then in like the 1800s, at least in the US, like that's when Christmas shopping became like kind of a thing to do. And Santa was being featured in like advertising for it. I'm not really sure how we got from one to another. Uh, I don't want to do any more research, but. In 1930, Coca-Cola released a cartoon of a Santa Claus that became the Santa that we all recognize with the gay little suit and the gay little hat. But you know what? It kind of is nice because we leave it open for discussion and people can educate. Or they can just take what we say at face value, which is worst case scenario. Which is worst case scenario. So if you're out there saying (laughs) Coca-Cola invented Santa Santa Claus, Claus, who's to say? Who's to say? Who's to say? But I think that Santa needs to check in because I really do think we have gone a little bit too far with the toys, with the goods, and with the products and services that he offers. Is Mrs. Claus happy? Be honest. She has to Is she be. happy? Well, it's just so sad because what's her job? What's her job? And listen, 
Maybe she doesn't want a job, and I respect that. Is she kind of like the first lady? She's kind of the first lady. She's like, oh, I'm in charge of milk and cookies. I'm in charge when, of the hot cocoa. Turn? When is it her turn? And that's what I'm... Where's I just that? got... I, I got, got chills. chills. I think that's coming soon, Joe. I'm sure. I'm sure it's been in the works from someone for years being like, Mrs. Claus... This time, Mrs. Claus takes the reins. <sighs> Santa's sick. She gets behind that sleigh. That was a really great opportunity during COVID for them to say Santa, Santa has, has COVID. COVID. Mrs. Claus is stepping up. So you're saying, okay, it's 2020. They're like, we can't even shoot anything, but we're going to shoot this shit. Yes. Pretty easy. I mean, the elves, we could all be CGI. So easy. Santa, Mrs. Claus, cast two big name people who are married. Done. Tom Hanks, Rita Wilson. They had COVID from day one. Never forget. Never forget when Tom Hanks got COVID. That was the scariest was like, day of was my like life. Zero. He was patient zero in Australia, and it was the scariest day of my life. <laughs> that was literally so terrifying. Did you think he was going down? I think a lot of people we all thought, thought we all thought he was down. done. Him and Rita were toast. And, and I thought this is the end. It's going to come for all of us. Talk about press! Amazing press That's for amazing them. Amazing press to first get the to get COVID nineteen almost at the beginning. Yeah, and start then the trend. Survive. And come back with a vengeance. Say, hey, guys. Hey, you guys. How are you? Yeah, I have antibodies now. What's up? That's crazy. But I agree with you. I cast think it's, a couple. Cast a couple. Mrs. Claus. Cast, perfect casting, in my opinion, is Tom yeah. Hanks and Rita Wilson. Because Rita Wilson absolutely lives a little bit in Tom Hanks' shadow. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's not a bad idea. So when did you stop believing in Santa? Give it to me straight and give it to me quick. Sixth grade. Because we've talked Sixth about grade. this before. Period. Sixth grade, Same. I was 11 years old, and the rest is history. But it's it was introduced to me in fourth grade. So I've been thinking about three years. Was was he saying telling me the so truth? So in fourth grade, when that hit you, well, yeah. Fourth. Okay. Um. Sometimes I just really can't do math. So when that hit you, the first time, the the first crack in the veneer. Yeah. What what shifted? Like, did you start questioning it? going forward like fifth grade was it different for you were you a little bit like let's Mm. just i don't know if santa actually brought me these things i honestly believe that once i was told that santa wasn't real in fourth grade it came my belief came back with a vengeance yes it got stronger how would santa get to you guys your houses without um ranger and rudolph because i was like you're out here going to say that Santa's not real, but I know he is. And I'm going to spread the message of Santa Claus to all of these other kids because you know what, Robert? You're not getting any gifts this year. Watch Polar Express and then talk to me. But Polar Express was extreme propaganda for Santa. That was scaring us straight. <sighs> if that bell stopped ringing, I would have genuinely lost my mind. When the parents can't hear the bell... The way that my heart collapsed. And the little sister can hear it. She can of hear it she because can. she believes. Of course she can. That was such a sickening, gut-wrenching feeling. You know I went to the Hallmark store. You know I bought that bell. Of course you brought the bell. I, can't I still have the bell to this day. The way that you pitch that as propaganda. Well, it is. It is. Did it not scare you straight? It said, I gotta believe in, I gotta believe in Santa Claus because God forbid... I fucked this shit up. Get me on that damn train. Get me that bell. And I am hearing that. Get me that hot chocolate. Get me that hot Hot chocolate. chocolate. But do not show me that creepy conductor. Or that weird chase scene. Isn't there a creepy chase scene on the the roof? No, there's there's like a chase scene. Isn't there a chase scene? On the train? On the train that's like, there's like gifts underneath them or whatever. It's like freaky deaky. And then are they going to make it? I hated that film. I hated the Polar Express. It was scary. But I was moved. I was moved because by the end... And you said it. If Josh you Groban singing believe. that song. That's top. That's top ten for me. It's, I can't say top five. Top, but it's top ten, 10 is ten. a pretty vast and wide amount. Because of Because I don't think it's necessarily one of the t- like one that you would listen to to like get like hype for the holidays. Right. But it's one that's gonna get you in the spirit. That's me with Where Are You Christmas. Yes. My believe is your Where, Where Are, Are You Christmas? Christmas. Faith Hill's version. Of course. And then I would also give Taylor, Taylor Momsen's version like a, a B plus. I think that's all she wanted. I think that's all she wanted. That's and all she wanted. Cut her the check. Cut her the fucking check. Oh. What about you? Do you? 
I don't think I ever when I found did, when I found out that Santa wasn't real in fourth we grade. Never did talked, I ever talk no, to you about it? Just like we never talked about being gay. Yeah, we never talked about Santa being real or, no. or false. I, I want to say something. Santa is real, and I said this last year. Yeah, it's just about our decision to stop believing. I completely. And once you stop believing, you can't hear that damn bell. I have no. You know what I mean. You can't hear the bell because, again, then you're going to go every single Christmas, every single holiday season, every single December saying, why am I excited? Why am I excited? And it does depress the fuck out of you. Oh, of course. But I, yeah, I was in sixth grade. I have said it before. First day of sixth grade. Miss Armstrong, my favorite teacher, says, we're learning about Jesus this year. And he's a real guy, not like Santa Claus. What? First of all. What? They were teaching about Jesus in sixth yeah, it was grade? Like, we were learning about like um world history. Wow. What? The, I mean, it's a little... I think that they need to rip the Band-Aid off in high school. Well, that seems really <laughs> extreme. If I got to Six high school... too young. If I got to high school and was still believing in Santa Claus, just shoot me. Just shoot me. Because it can't get worse. I don't... But don't you believe that's very on brand? For me? Yeah. Well, yes. But I still think that would be... Listen, like it's not on brand because at least I didn't believe that one. At least I mean, had Miss Armstrong not intervened, perhaps, perhaps I could have gotten there. And it just what was sucks. the revelation for you? It sucks. Oh, it, uh, the revelation for me actually, I think I looked it up. I think I decided to type my fingers away and said, "Is Santa real?" And then I was reading different things oh, that were coming geez. up on the internet because at that See, time I was on. If the I was Joe Biden. I would say, let's make sure if you type in, if someone searches, is Santa real? The only result is yes. Wipe it clean. Wipe it clean. Wipe the slate. Censorship. It is censorship. Because especially now. Especially now. Can you imagine? My kids, that's why my kids are going to be Amish. I would love to know the percentage of kids that still believe. I think, I, it's I think it's decreasing it's decreasing and decreasing as as technology advances the belief we gotta in Santa go, we gotta decreases. get back we gotta go back to 1999 are we gonna gotta go back, back to, to 1999? 1999 do you think that the two of us can save christmas <laughs> i just think we are let me let me guess two of the most the pathetic, pathetic men, men in america, america. At least it's I just think we America. Could save Christmas. I think we could save Christmas. I think we could. I would be interested to see what your plan of attack is for that. What would your strategy be? What would your campaign be to save Christmas? Is this also veering on a little bit of um, conservatism? Because I'm trying to, to like, save Christmas. To save Christmas. But you know what? Every Everyone's trying to take away is spirit. And spirit goes across any religion. Spirit goes across any – if you're a believer in Santa, if you're not a believer in Santa, it doesn't matter. It's the spirit. Spirit of the holidays. You stopped believing. I and stopped it's believing miserable... and it just ruins everything. It ruins everything. For years. For years and years and years. And I, only, years. I think I've only, over, only recently gotten over it. Yeah. I, I realized think... that I could be a Santa. You can I could be, be a Santa, Santa for someone else. And now that there's a baby in my family, Merry fucking Christmas. Merry fucking Fucking Christmas. It's about to get fucking weird. Are you about to buy a lot of Christmas gifts? Well, I mean, she's like a she's like an yeah. infant. But like once once that child is cognizant, yeah. buckle up. I'm doing it all. You're I'm doing getting it. reindeer. There's gonna be reindeer on the front lawn. Like I'm gonna oh, get of I'm gonna course. Bu- I'm reindeer. sure I'm gonna get a call. So I'm gonna Andrew, have to leave get the my on, family put the on. with my nieces and I'm gonna have to put on a wig. And be Santa. For sh- for absolute sure. I, I really like I don't know why I couldn't as like with my family because my family has a big Christmas Eve and there's always one Santa. It's never been you. It's never been me because I they've gay. been like because I'm scared. Because you're gay. You think that's what it is? Yeah. They were like, Santa's not that femme. I'm Mr. White Christmas. I'm Mr. Snow. I'm Mr. Icicles. I'm Mr. Quarter Below. Folks call me Snow Miser. Whatever I touch turns to snow in my clutch. I'm too much. Take it away. I'm Mr. Green Christmas. I'm Mr. Sun. I'm Mr. Heat Blister. I'm Mr. 101. Folks call me Heat Miser. Whatever I touch turns to... What is it? Snow. 
So in a turn of events for our usual good children format, we are going to take it away to the guidance office a little bit earlier this week because I had people call in and tell us their most traumatic stories about losing their belief in Santa Claus. Oh, and I think that this is this is part of our plan. This is our job. We listen to the Yes, stories. and we're going to tell them why they're wrong. Good, good children, children to, to the, the North, North Pole. Pole. I'm going to melt the shit out of the North Pole. This is going to be a good start. Hey, Joe and Andrew. I uh, love you so much. Um, I was like nine or ten when I stopped believing in Santa Claus because I was watching Nickelodeon and, you know, one thing led to another and it soon turned into Nick at night. Um, must have fallen asleep and woken up because all of a sudden Everybody Loves Raymond was on. And I didn't really watch Everybody Loves Raymond, but sometimes it was just, you know, it was just there. And I kind of just started paying attention and they did uh, they did mention that Santa Claus wasn't real um, during the episode, and I was shocked. And so that night, I asked my mom um, if Santa Claus wasn't real, and she looked at me and she was like, no. <laughs> and that was the end of that. So. Thank you. Bye. I love you. Ray Romano. Bitch. Ray Romano. You know what? Let's How does it cancel feel? Ray Romano because Long he's actually. No. Ray Romano is from Queens. Is he? I don't know, but he definitely played a Long Islander in a lot of things. Fuck Ray Romano. Fuck Ray Romano because you know what? The only Romano I stand is a cheese. And, you and know a what, Christy Ray? Carlson. And Christy Carlson. And you know what? You know what they're not doing? That cheese or Ruining Christy Carlson? the spirit of Christmas. Taking the hearts out of children and saying, you don't have Christmas this year. Christmas isn't real because Santa's not real. Your parents got you the gifts. Check the basement. I'm pissed. At I'm Ray pissed Romano. at Ray Romano. I feel ill about Ray Romano. Everybody loves Ray Romano. Not us. Not us. I did I did sometimes like that show though. It felt like it was close to family. Yeah, it was familiar. They felt like it was it was like that in King of Queens. I was like, this yes. is my family on on TV. Yes. Ray Romano, I'm sorry. I do think he might be sweet. I I also agree. I think that you take. But take I back question what you said. Nick at Knight's decision making in that in that lineup that they would play such a show. I can't believe like at Nick at whoever Knight. like was like yeah let's this is let's the put episode. in the episode where they ruin Christmas for children. The kids are staying up. So I'm gonna be your child. I'm gonna be Totino Muscarella. Okay. I'm gonna be 12 years old. Okay. Horrendously bullied at school. Okay. You're playing yourself. Okay. In 15 years. Great. Which means Totino is born in three years from the present. Okay. Which makes sense. Dad. To- yeah, yeah, Tony. I, w- <laughs> I was at school today and um, some of the boys were being really mean to me. And I told them if they keep being mean to me, Santa's not going to give them gifts this year like you told me. And one of them told me that Santa wasn't real. Listen, Tony. These boys, you can't listen to the falsehoods that they're spreading, okay? Uh, let, let me take it from here. I'm going to talk to the parents. I'm going to talk to their parents. Because you don't deserve this at school. But is Santa real? Santa is real if you believe. So what does that mean? Sweetheart. Totino. Santa has lived for thousands and thousands of years in the spirit of How many children. Possible? In the spirit of many children. But Santa isn't in fact in the North Pole, Totino. Where is he? He's inside of you. <laughs> he's in your heart. So So he's fake? So you lied to me? Totino, I didn't My lie. whole life is a lie? Totino, don't do this. I got I was getting bullied today and I told them that Santa was real and I look like a fucking idiot. No, you don't look like an idiot, Totino. It's just because you believe and don't let that belief go away. I hate you. Don't hate me, Totino. I wanna live with mom. <laughs> Totino, I'm so sorry. You can't live with mom. Why not? Because uh, 
she's on set <laughs> of what <laughs> um even Stevens the reboot <laughs> <laughs> no that was good joe yeah i wonder if everyone likes when we just decide to start doing improv now I got, I, it's, we're kind of improvers we're ucb the shit out of this podcast oh my god hello okay so i'm gonna tell you how i stopped leaving in santa claus it was honestly more traumatic for um all others involved i believed or like told myself that i believe until i was literally like 13 i think and then my brother finally told my mom, I was like, you have to stop. You have to tell her, like, this is insane. She's in junior high. <laughs> um, so then my mom told me, and I screamed and cried and freaked out and yelled about how the Easter Bunny was probably fake, too. And I was, like, singing Christmas songs, but I was, like, putting in nasty lyrics about Santa. And I was like, he doesn't know if you're asleep or awake. He's just a big old fake. And then, because my family is the best, um, on Christmas Eve, they we used to have a fake Santa come that was literally, like, some random old man they hired. And I was the youngest, even at 13, and they still had already hired him for that year. So then I was super mad at my family and everyone and fake Santa, but fake Santa didn't know I didn't believe, I guess. So we all just kind of sat there, and he, like, made weird jokes toward my grandmother. And that was the last year we hired an old man to come. And it was a very odd Christmas, and everyone made fun of me for it. Um, it was just so fun, you know? I believe a long time. And I love you guys. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. The pivot from not believing Santa Claus to this creepy <laughs> old Santa Claus the old hitting man. on or saying things to the grandmother. I love that man. <laughs> that man, that is, man nuts. is you. That man That's is you. nuts. Wait, wait. Okay. I think that we would have been best friends at 13. Yeah. 13 years old. The fact he knows that when you were believed. sleeping. He knows when you were awake. He's a big old fake. fake? scalding you were kind of you were a lyricist wow that i mean 13 is a little bit it gets there it's getting there i love that i love that for you i imagine you were such a fun child yeah and such a good child because this is i can only assume since i was the youngest and you were the youngest like it is fun like with nieces too you can you kind of keep it, it going you keep it going but like it's fun to be once able you to stop see believing them still get yeah excited. once you stop believing it's like everyone in the family is over it's like yeah. oh fun's over until we have a grandkid exactly and that was kind of it we were the last hope i know in our families we were the last hope we were the last hope in so many ways i'm the last hedges i'm the last hedges oh my isn't god. that crazy oh my god Thank God I have a the brother. The name dies with me. That's crazy. I, you don't have any cousins with the no, same no hedges. hedges. My uncle doesn't have any children. I am the final hedges. I'm in disbelief. I actually yeah. don't even know how to vote. Like, the family line dies here. I wonder, like, with the 13-year-old who still believes in Santa, like, what when you parent if you want children will you allow your kids no to i will have to draw a line i think but i would never want to say it to them so maybe i don't I want would. to rip the band-aid but off. i think i would have to i would be clever i'd be manipulative like i would plant something i would put on i would say let's watch everybody loves raymond you're right you know what i mean let's watch one of my favorite episodes there needs to be a healthy bridge i would hate to look at my child and crush that dream but do you, you also think... kind of own up you gotta own up to being a, a liar to them for you the, the past 13 years but isn't it almost worse thinking about it this way your kid comes in knowing santa's not real and they but you. doesn't say they anything to say to you, wants you to say something and they you never say anything do you think that kid is now harboring resentment towards you? Well, I think so. Oh, geez. This is one of the toughest things about being a parrot. Oh, you think it's it's Santa Claus? Yeah. Sure. 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 Y'all, this is so bad. I found out freshman year of high school, age 15, <gasps> in the cheer locker room. Haley. Haley, Haley that is... I literally... Chilling. It is bone chilling. Because I genuinely... And not in like a way where I'm like, that's embarrassing. It is putting myself in your cheer shoes, finding out at 15 years old that in Santa is not real. In the cheer locker room. room. And I it's like, we don't have any context. context. We need more context. We need more context because, again, I do believe Did it's someone like, tell her? Haley's like, oh, you guys, what did you ask for, for, for Santa? Santa. Like, they're, like, <laughs> they're like, from Santa? Santa? 
Santa's like, not real, Haley. She's like, what do you mean? I wrote my letter and I sent it in the mail. What do you mean to Santa's not real? Or she was like, uh, yeah, I of course Santa's not real. Like I knew that. You think she conceded? Headphones quick? on. You don't know no, how it feels. Haley, you're the winner of the week because that you're, is tough. That was kind of like your, um, I was going to say a cheerleading term, your round off back handspring. <laughs> that was the round off back handspring of, of the, the episode. Yeah. A lot of people are saying they knew Santa was fake when Santa bought them a gift they only told their mom they wanted. But my mom would get around that. She would usurp that rule. She'd be like, well, I told Santa. You told Santa, but also isn't, he sees you when, when you're, you're sleeping. sleeping. He, he knows, knows when, when you're awake. awake. It should be like, he hears There's everything you think you're say- thinking. <laughs> yes. So much more scary. It's it scary because it's he like. He hears everything you're thinking. thinking. Whether you're asleep or awake. awake. You tell your mom what gift you, you want. And he'll make it, it anyway. So, so you, you better watch out. out. But yeah. that's what I'm saying. And to bring it back. We need to figure out a new method for Santa because he cannot be the direct manufacturer of all these toys anymore. No. And those elves should unionize because if they are I working agree. on all those toys, I highly doubt their wages have increased with inflation. I highly doubt their – where are they living? All right. I where have, are they living? I have a solution. What, are their, what is their health care? We were wondering this. I honestly think that, like again, it's the Christmas magic. That's not cutting it. We want reform you, in the elf community. I think that Mrs. Claus is a healer. I do. I do believe this. It gets this. back to the witchcraft. It gets I, back to the witchcraft. So this is what I'm thinking for, for Santa. So to get around this, I think that Santa needs to be the facilitator. I don't think that Santa needs to be pitching that he has a drop ship. I, exactly. I think he's like the parents of these kids or the kids are saying to Santa what they want. Santa's Santa's calling the targets. <laughs> Santa is calling. He's Santa is leading an EF tour. And he's literally like, for the spirit of Christmas, I am gifting you these presents because you deserve them. But he shouldn't be out here saying he's making those gifts that I see in the aisles. Right. Because it's a little Walmart. It's a little bit incredulous. It is. In some ways. To so, say that Santa made the Brat Ski Lodge. And I think on Santa's behalf, it would honestly take a lot off of his plate to say he's not making the gifts. He can deliver some of them, but not all of them. He is facilitating the gift exchange. Yes, he's a facilitator. Does that ruin the Christmas magic? So he's calling Target? I don't think it ruins the Christmas magic. I think he, in the spirit of Christmas, is the one that is covering the cost of the present. He's covering the cost. People say I recognize Santa's handwriting was my mom's handwriting. I never that one never filled in for me. That that blank was never filled in. No, but because... I, re- I consider myself a very discerning, very inquisitive, very intelligent child. But I'll tell and you, nevertheless, when you don't when you don't want to believe the truth, you'll do anything to stretch the limits of your imagination. And I do believe that your parents are also very smart. My parents were very smart as well. My mom didn't write in her handwriting. Yeah, it was... she would be like, absolutely not. She was either doing little squiggles. Right. She was making right. a different font. You're right. Of course, she wasn't going to do that. And they would go to the extremes of setting up a camera. Yes, I know the cameras. And like, it would be like, that's so sweet. It was so that's sweet. So sweet. That's sweet. That's something that I think that you'll carry through. But it almost makes it worse. worse. No, because now as an adult, don't you look back and you're like, I that do. was really sweet that my yeah. parents did that. There was just a few years where it's hell. And it's also the same years of your life where you want to die anyway because you're like in middle school. Yeah. So like it doesn't really, it doesn't help. It compounds. Oh, Google the Santa reel in fifth grade. My mom sobbed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, huge fan of the pod. I just saw your story about how we found out Santa was a real. Um, so I found out when I was in fifth grade and to preface this i was really into candleton bowling <laughs> as a child um and i was like pretty good like i went to state championships for candleton bowling um so i really wanted like my own set of candleton bowl bowling balls like personal to me instead of four um so like i asked custom. Santa for them of course and i got them and i was really excited I and over christmas kids. break i went to the bowling alley to use them and um the broad was like oh are you happy you got them your dad was here to pick them up and I was like, what? Um, and then I bowled really bad after that because my spirit was destroyed. Um, so that's how I found out. And that was probably a little bit too old. Bye. Oh, my God. No, you weren't too old. That's so sad that you had to keep bowling. 
your you're trying you you find out that it was all a lie and you got a bowl nothing's nothing is sadder to me than the idea of a fifth grader miserably candle pin bowling shut down like finding out that Santa's gutters. not real oh that's really sad I need to I need to start watching more movies. I need to start watching more movies this holiday season. I need oh, to start God. eating more and I need <laughs> <laughs> You should start eating more. I should right? Because I feel like I haven't eating been eating anything. No, you should start eating more. More festive the what's festive food? Nothing. What's like a hearty a hearty soup? You're gonna have a hearty soup? What's 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 December what's, foods? December foods are marshmallows, candy canes, hot chocolates. Gumdrops, gingerbread, sugar cookies, galama. That's good. Prosciutto, baked clams, lasagnas, sfingil. a cannoli. And a zet toast. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Everything t- seems to be sweet, mostly sweet. I said spinjil. I said what's fit? Spinjil is the squid. Oh, spinjil. You're thinking, I put no, shriadel. No, you're thinking shriadel. I'm talking spinjil. So uh, you go shriadel. You spinjil. Spinjil. Shriadel. There were a few shriadels in my fridge this morning. You're kidding. I swear to God, very good. Do you like a spinjil? A Schwingil, I don't love. A Schwiedel, I love. Well, that's different. Yeah, of course. I don't like a Schwingil. Why are you afraid of a Schwingil? Because I'm I'm afraid of Schwingis in general. But I think that they're. I mean, it's quite. It's basically Galama, but not fried. No. No. Exactly. But you gotta toughen up. You gotta man up and eat the squid. At some point, you gotta look at yourself in the mirror and say, "I am a grown adult man, and I can eat the Schwingil." Okay. Okay. This okay. Year. This year, I'm going to go to an Italian restaurant. And I'm going to say, "Can I get the spinjil?" And they're going to say, "You <laughs> need the this squid." What are you saying? <laughs> spinjil. Spinjil. I'm like, yeah, I want the spinj. The spinji. Do they say spinji? I feel like I know people who say spinji. I bet you do. That's going to be my daughter's name. Well, I'm a little bit hungry. I'm starving, Joe. We started this podcast without eating, and we're going back to a place that we weren't. We're not, we haven't, we've been there kind of recently, but there's something on the menu that I personally just need to see in person. I have a feeling I know what it is. What is it? No, by recently, do you mean like really recently? Yeah. What are we getting? Are we getting the Wendy's nacho burgers? <laughs> yes, we are! <laughs> <laughs> the triple decker Wendy's nacho burgers. You want me triple decker, triple decker Joe? Triple decker. You got the triple deckers, Joe. Let's just get in the car. And it is how do you move the car? <laughs> that's what I. That's why I wasn't driving it. Oh. Well, I'm on brake, right? This is the brake. Yeah. This now you're in neutral. Right, now the you're in neutral. The one where my foot is is the brake. Yeah. Okay. Does that park well? It's perfect. It's like it's like an inch from the curb. Hey guys! Hey guys! We are in the car. And I'm behind the wheel. Joe actually just parked the car, and it's a great park, right, Amanda? It's unbelievable. But- well, so we ordered on the in, on the podcast, and this is more to you because we told them. I ordered two triple decker nacho cheeseburgers from Wendy's. Okay. Triple. It decker. took 45 minutes to get here. It just got delivered, and first yeah. thing we see when we walk down the steps is, what is this? What is this coffee? Is I, have, I have to read, I have to read It's for order. John H. It's not for Joe H. I have to read everybody the order. So what we have today... I'm done. I just want to know I deleted Jordan. And you need to think, you need to think about them receiving our order. <laughs> is it healthy? A double stack, no ketchup, extra pickle, extra onion, extra tomato, <gasps> add lettuce, no American cheese, no mustard, a chili, and a cold brew, a frosty cream cold brew. That's I mean thank That's God, really thank God we got that. They they wanted no cheese. They got two Double triple decker nacho, nacho. Triple nacho. But we're gonna starve to death. I've been I did say yesterday you I wanted chili for Wendy's. So we're gonna have one bite of this burger each, I guess. I guess. Man, what do you suggest we do about this? We got a cold platform. Uber Eats. Not a problem, but go to help. 
Look at this. Look at how many tomatoes. The wrong order. And then when they say, have we resolved your issue? This is basically a salad. This is a health person. This is a health person. I'm removing the tomatoes. This I don't tell you what, I'm hung up where I said no mustard. They don't do that in New York. The mustard? How do they even have the I gotta try this no cold mustard. brew though. Is it delicious? Oh, it's, it's delicious. This is all very confusing to me. I'm gonna be drinking that all the time. It's so oh, sweet. Well, it's a little, too, it's almost too rich for me. Whoa. So this burger <laughs> is, it's a double if you're ordering from them. Wendy's and this is what you're doing, don't, or, don't order Go to from, from Wendy's. Wendy's. Go to Sweet Green. Go to Sweet Green. <laughs> they wanted the salad. They were like, oh, I'm feeling a little bit like it's my cheat day, so I'm gonna get no cheese on my burger, extra tomato. You got the extra pickle in there. Hard not to. Pretty good. Are they it's turning? Dry. Well, it's of dry. course. Well, there's no sauce. I could not be more upset right now. I could not be there's more upset. There's nothing more annoying than when you order food and it doesn't come correctly and then they give you back the money and they're like, did we resolve your problem? No. no. You could never you yet. could never possibly resolve my problem. <laughs> Unless you're right, exactly. Unless you, you showed can't go back up in here. Time. <laughs> you can't undo no. the damage you have you, done no. to me. You'd have to literally, because even if you bring me the food now, it's too late. It's too late. You need to an go hour, back in over time. Over an hour has passed. And get it right. I can't believe that that's the order that they gave you. And we hate tomatoes. We hate tomatoes. You want a patty, a loose patty? Yeah, I want a patty. I'm gonna have it on the bread. Oh, it's different. Give me the pickle. It's different when you just eat it like that. Mmm. You want? <laughs> I wouldn't say it's necessarily juicy. No, it's very dry. It looks dry. This is such a waste. I'm so sorry that they have to see this because it was so exciting when it was gonna be the nachos, the nacho burger. Have you seen that nacho burger? I, I I don't know why I'm just thinking in my head. I'm just laughing it. about the idea about John? Of, the, of John getting two triple decker, <laughs> triple decker nacho cheese like, burgers. Actually, think, uh, like that would have been the first time they had that order. Mm -hmm. And you know that, that that man is like, what? Oh Jesus Christ! We're always being haunted by the United States Postal Service. <laughs> no, yeah, they just deliver deliver a package. Oh no! Well, oh, he just saw you. That's cool. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was good until it wasn't. It's too sweet. It's way too sweet. Then that makes me wonder for John. So John's not concerned about sugar. John's no. not concerned about sugar. John might just have a textural issue. Maybe he doesn't like sauces. Maybe he has his own sauce at home. I think he might have his own sauce at home. He like loads stuff with mayo. But, and maybe and he wants a different sauce. kind of cheese. And it's not like John, yes, John is not He's lactose. lactose intolerant. No. no. Cause that's he lactose. might just wanted like he might have wanted to put you know Swiss on it or something. John, if you're out there, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry you got. But I'm order. actually. I want an apology from him. Yeah. <laughs> because I, any, I was actually when we first got a random order, I said this could be really good for us. Yeah. Because what if it was okay. something crazy? Uh huh. You're I would right. say your order was in seven ninety seven. Mine was thirty dollars. <gasps> yeah. You you got two triple decker nacho burgers for thirty dollars, Wendy. We have sung your praises. No, this has nothing to do with Wendy. This has to do with the the driver. You're gonna blame it on the individual. I'm gonna have to say he, if he had two orders and it's a John H and Joe H, that's a problem. It's contributory negligence. You think, and We're that's why wrong. you have a lawyer. Contributory negligence. Yes. Contributory negligence. <laughs> well, that's a hot. shame. I was so excited to take you guys on an adventure with that burger. I think it was maybe a side. We also, I mean, before the food came, we, we did have, have salami and cheese and roast beef. And I put some mayo on the roast beef loose oh. with some sauce. I'm sure we'll go in there and finish your, that off. Your mom will have a sandwich, sandwich waiting. waiting you know? Well, with that, happy holidays, and we'll see you again if you want more of Amanda. We'll see her on Patreon. Heading right into Patreon this yeah. moment. All right. It's scary. Cheese, add lettuce. No sauce. Well, at least we know that John H is uh, extra. I feel a sense of defeat, but we would have felt horrible. And I can't even imagine what the nacho cheese tastes like, and I feel like I'll never find out. Maybe I'll go tomorrow. I won't know what the triple decker nacho cheeseburger tastes like because John H will. I'm sure he doesn't even eat it. 
sure he's not even going to eat it. He's going to take the cheese off and he's going to want to add some tomatoes. Because he's obsessed with tomatoes and pickles and onions and lettuce. Turn around. I didn't know, I didn't think that you knew that heat miser was beef caked up. Oh. Talk about energy. Talk about high energy. <laughs> Talk about the best energy you've ever had. Oh my God. I guess we'll see you next week for our final installment of the holiday specials. Maybe we'll talk about something different. Maybe we won't. Maybe, Maybe it'll be the same thing again. Who knows? But until then, don't forget to do your homework. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, review. Send it to your friends. Again, the holiday seasons are here. We're being fun. They're like, why are these freaks wearing these outfits? And because we want you to send it to your friends. And Patreon. Join us on Patreon for an exclusive video and audio episode every single Friday. This week, we're bringing Amanda back on. Amanda is My sister's on. back on. She's ready to fight. And I'm ready to take it. So you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh yeah. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. You're bulged up. <laughs>